This is an Audible original. I'm on the freeway from San Diego, heading north to Vista Detention Center, where I'm going to go, hopefully, I'm going to go meet David Paul Frediani for the first time. I'm watching myself in a video from a long time ago, driving up the California Coast Freeway to visit a murderer. You know, he's just been convicted of murdering Helena Greenwood, strangling her sort of viciously and violently in her garden. The evidence was absolutely compelling and I don't have much doubt that he did actually kill her. At least, that was what I thought then. In 1985, a young British researcher, Helena Greenwood, working on the emerging science of DNA, had been horribly murdered in her garden in Southern California. It appeared that she'd resisted her attacker, kicking and scratching. I remember her stockings. They, they come in my dreams. She had stockings on and they had a, a run a hole in the knee because it looks like she was on her knees fighting or something. The police soon zoned in on the one man with a motive, David Paul Frediani, a good-looking financial analyst who was about to stand trial for sexually assaulting Helena Greenwood the year before. We strongly believe that he could have been in Southern California, but we were not able to connect him directly to the crime scene with any forensic evidence. We were not able to find fingerprints, shoe impressions, witnesses, but for years, 15 years, the murder went unsolved. But then, the science that Helena had been working on gathered so much pace, it caught up with David Paul Frediani. The science that had been her life solved the mystery of her death. The man it put in the frame, the man the police had always suspected, was Frediani. I got obsessed with the case. I moved to California and sat through every day of the murder trial. But the desperate David Paul Frediani, who didn't want to get convicted of forcing her to orally copulate him, didn't want his family and friends to know the monstrous deed he did, who was desperate to make this trial go away, left a little bit of himself behind at the murder too. He left his blood. Written in that blood, found under one of Helena's fingernails and stored for 15 years in the police forensic lab was his unique DNA profile. On the basis of that DNA, Paul Frediani was convicted and sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, a living death sentence. But he always claimed he was innocent. Someone, and we don't even know who, could have been anybody, took some and contaminated the evidence with it on purpose, not, not by accident, but purposely did it. I think it could have been anybody. But then a small crack appeared in my perfect case, the case I'd now written a book about. I came across a letter that Paul Frediani's defense team had overlooked. The letter opened up the possibility that someone might have tampered with his DNA sample, just as he told me. I sent the letter to Paul Frediani in prison. I thought he had a right to see it. And then, nothing. For 18 years, nothing. Until I heard from a different convicted murderer, Dustin. A man who, in San Quentin prison, has taught himself law and is convinced of Frediani's innocence, in part because of that letter I found and sent. I think they got the wrong man, Samantha, based on what you and I discovered. And so, together, we've reinvestigated the murder of Helena Greenwood. He from his prison cell and me on the outside. We've raked back through the old investigation and unearthed fresh evidence, trying to work out once and for all just how Helena Greenwood died back in 1985 and whether the state might have convicted the wrong man. You have a prepaid call from... David Frediani. Did you murder Helena Greenwood?